Hey everybody, welcome to the video and welcome to Goodwill. You guys know this, this, uh, if you guys are watching these videos, you know this Goodwill here. Big Goodwill, tons of stuff. We're attacking the glass right off the bat. We're going to see what they got in there. Probably haven't changed much over yet. Um, Sony camera in there, thought about it for a little bit. Uh, I thought I might pick it up towards the end of my trip if I really didn't find too much. Uh, that Sony camera right there goes for probably about uh, 50, maybe 60 bucks. It's the A560. It's not you know the best camera in the world, but it still resells. Canon, Sony cameras, be on the lookout. They do resell well. Um, the next on that list will probably be like Samsung cameras. They do sell well as two, even older ones. Just standard little point and shoots. People still look out for them. Um, maybe some people are just comfortable with that style or when they came out from that year. There they are right there. You see the comps on the screen right there. It's a little bit of a high buy-in price. About six, about 20... Uh, I can't really tell in my own video. But it looks about 25 or 27, I think. Only thing I saw really in the glass that would have been worth it. I'm going to come take a look at this glass section over here. Kind of peer at the jewelry really quick. See if there's anything I should be picking up. Any designer pieces, maybe. But not much. Not much on this one either. This Goodwill doesn't really get too... I've never bought jewelry at this Goodwill. So... And some makeup. I know people that come in here and they buy like a bunch of makeup. Uh, a lot of the makeup does come from Target. And it's usually all brand new. They'll come buy it and resell it. And they do pretty well with it. I know makeup's, makeup's expensive. If, you know, if you guys, even at Target, even just tar makeup at Target, it's expensive. And I'm pretty sure if they sell it for a great deal here, you can kind of move it pretty well on eBay. Uh, obviously, you have to price it less than what the retail store does to make those sales. But kind of moved down a little bit of a different section here. I'm going to swing by the purses later. Uh, like I've said, you know, I kind of have too many purses right now. My purse uh, storage is pretty full. So, but we are going to pick up a purse here. This is um, Temptations. It's a <laughs> brand of kitchenware, casserole dishes, you know, regular dishes. It's pretty distinctive style. Um, and a lot of them come with that like wire basket. Not very, it's not, it used to be good. It used to be a good brand to resell, but I think the market just kind of flooded with a bunch of temptations. And a lot of their stuff is pretty big and heavy. So shipping that out, you know, it's gonna require a good box, good packaging material. And as far as the profit you're going to make on it, it's just not there. It's not, I mean, when you account for everything, um, you're not going to make that much. Going through the wallets, uh, if you guys remember, saw my last video where I was at this Goodwill, I found a Brighton wallet. And Brighton wallets do really well, like probably $25, $30, $40 for those wallets. And they're tiny. Sometimes they do better than the purses. They're small, throw them in a bubble mailer, get them out. They're easy to store, easy to ship. You guys hear me say that a lot. Easy to store and easy to ship. That's the key, especially when you're first starting out. Um, getting those smaller items, they I mean, they really do uh, help you out in, in your reselling adventure because when it comes time to shipping stuff, man, sometimes some of those big items, they... Can be a pain in the butt and i love it when everything just goes into a poly bag or a bubble mailer piece of cake i think i've seen this little wallet here before clothing would also is also pretty good i mean when it comes to shipping and storage of of uh clothing it's really good i mean i can't I do watch some other uh, clothing resellers on, on YouTube and stuff, and I, I wish I was more into clothes just because the storage of it, the shipping of it, it's not necessarily breakable. 
I mean, it could get damaged. And I have had shirts get damaged in tr in transport, where somehow, some way, like the pack, the bag got ripped through, or and then the product got ripped. Kind of weird, but it happens. I, I don't know what the heck happened to that thing. Um, what the heck happened to my my clothing that does get damaged? But um, easy to ship. I mean, everything oh, clothing pretty much goes in a poly bag. Um, Sometimes you can get away with just uh, the bubble mailers from the post from USPS priority. And I I just don't like clothes. <laughs> I don't like reselling clothes. It's not my thing. I do have some clothes, but I think the pieces I pull are cool and they're good profit items. I think they're cool, the clothing I pull. But one of these days and i've said this already one of these days i'm going to show you guys the little clothing haul me going through clothes and this store does get i mean a lot of the stores around here get good clothes this store gets good clothes i pulled some vintage uh vintage uh, uh major league baseball jerseys uh the jackets like the old like what's the material like polyester where it's shiny um they they were made by like starter found some of those here some vintage uh college college wear like college thing like uh i found a great uh i think it was a most recent one i sold with iowa buckeyes uh kind of windbreaker pullover like half zip vintage it was on an old tag what was the tag oh man i forgot the what the brand was it was an old brand it was bell or something like that sold that recently so I do pick up clothes from time to time. It's just not that often. I mean, the thrift stores have to be pretty dry and <laughs> finding anything in order for me to start going through clothes. But trust me, I can fill up a cart if I need to, but I don't like to. And it comes with experience. It comes with experience. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time, well over two decades, um, buying and selling stuff. You know, I didn't start out in, in clothes, purses, or anything like that. You know, I started out in sports cards. That's where I, where I started buying and reselling and branched out from there. And let's see, what else we got here? Got the furniture section. I'm kind of like, I'm not going my normal route. That you guys usually see. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit and make it a little bit different. Checking out the glassware. I'm gonna find a really cool um, cup here in a few moments. Sometimes we're looking at clear glass, it's just hard to see because everything's clear. <laughs> it's hard to see like what's good, what's not good. Yeah, you oh right here, right here, right here. This one I found. It's not it's not necessarily a good glass or the glassware. The glass isn't great, it's not crystal crystal glass it's um i'm just making sure it's etched and not a like a applied sticker or something uh, that's four roses bourbon uh whiskey bourbon and i've never seen four roses branded uh items i see a lot of jack daniels um knob creek i see uh like jameson Crown Royal. I'm naming a bunch of whiskey brands. That's primarily what I, you know, enjoy. And but there's other one. I mean, I, you saw me pick up that Hendrix gin shaker. There's a lot of uh, Grey Goose branded uh, clear glass, but I don't see Four Roses that often. I'm gonna keep this for myself. It's a buck eighty nine. I'm trying to look out for the second glass. Hopefully, there's a pair, but I do. I never find it. Thought that was something, but it was just, uh, I think it was like Rotary Club or something like that. Now, when it comes to, to crystal glass, that's the the glass that'll be, it'll be more, they're more of an intricate design because the glass is tougher. When it's just glass, when they make just glass, it's generally not as durable, easily breakable, but crystal glass when they start adding stuff to it like lead um it gives it a certain hardness and they're able to you know do more with it add more of a fancier design to it uh, and it'll hold its shape um a lot of the pressed glass is crystal glass cut glass 
I don't find too much cut glass. It's pretty pretty rare for me to find it. Uh, but you'll know it when you feel it. Press glass is going to be very, like all the, the design and everything on it is going to be very smooth. When it comes to cut glass, it feels like it could literally cut you. And they literally do cut into the glass. But it feels very sharp, all the edges. I don't find it that much. Like, I can't tell you the last time I even found a cut glass piece, but pretty rare in our in our parts. Maybe if you you know in older cities, um, you might find it. But see some carts over there. This guy's rolling around a cart, kind of eyeballing it. And what does he bring it out? Forget what time of the day. I think we're here earlier in the day. I don't. I think they've already been open for about an hour or so. Checking out some shoes. You guys know the deal with shoes. I'm <laughs> my shoe. I'm trying to keep my shoe, the shoes I sell, to a very minimum. Only good shoes. And I did. I just sold some Vans. Um, yesterday or the day before, sold some banshees that I've had sitting around for a little while. They sat for a while before they sold. I sold some Air Force Ones, white on white on white, triple whites, um, and then some Brooks. Sold some Brooks recently too. So some good brands. Look, of course, Nike. Always look out for Nike. And Brooks is, is a really popular brand, running brand. But look them up to make sure you have a style that's profitable. Not all Brooks are created equal. Now, this is the miscellaneous pottery and glassware that doesn't really have a home on an end cap. And... Like a little, that's actually like a little lacquer, lacquer box. Look like an apple. This is probably from Target or something, or maybe World Market. It's pretty cheap. Mm, not really much here. Not really much in this little miscellaneous section. Uh, we're gonna move on down the line. I don't pick up doll. I don't usually pick up dolls. I say I don't really find great dolls to resell, so those ones are gonna pass right up. But Goodwill have them priced at a at a pretty high for not being really worth too much. I remember I picked up a sculpture out of here. I forgot when that was. I saw a sculpture here. Didn't know if it, I didn't really see any comps on it. All right, there were no sold comps. There were a bunch listed, and I ended up picking it up and ended up selling for pretty good going over to England. So, even though I, you don't see me really picking up too much in that little section where it's miscellaneous, it doesn't have an end cap home. Um, there could be some good stuff just sitting there. I'm going to charge over, over the electronic side. Don't get in my way. <laughs> I'm trying to get over. And I am going to kind of briefly take a look at the end of these purses here. But I haven't been really finding... Like I said, my wife's going to find a good purse here. But I'm not really finding too many good purses at the moment. So... I'm probably going to add the purses towards the end of my um, rounds. Some sporting goods. There's some uh, tennis rackets, which I don't really deal with. Not sure what all these people are looking at here. Nothing very exciting that I can see. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know if you guys see anything there. If you guys see anything that I'm passing up, let me know. I do find a um, old hard drive, brand new in the box. I do find these from time to time. I always pick them up and look them up. Just I don't know. I always have this. 
I, I, I like internal computer components and keyboards and stuff. So if I find them, I'll grab them. I'll look at them. That really wasn't worth too much. And it was priced up about, I think it was 16 or $21. I forget exactly. But it was an old hard drive, used an old uh, uh, parallel connect, internal parallel collect connection. Um, this here, I was super curious about this. I did not know, like, what in the world is this a lap? At first, I thought maybe was it a laptop laying out there, a Lenovo laptop. Then my second thought is, is this a um, a photo frame? And I was like, wait, a Lenovo photo frame? That's kind of odd. Lenovo, I don't think Lenovo makes photo frames. But it's from 2012. It's actually a monitor, um, a travel monitor. So that way you can have two monitors on, you know, while you're on the road. Although I didn't see any of the other, other connect. I'll do the, you know, in the uh, uh, recap at the end, you know, I'll definitely dive a little deeper into it. Um, but I didn't see any other connections on it, so which has got me wondering how do I power this thing on? How do I get video to it? <clears throat> okay, but we're still here in the electronics section. What is that? Not seeing any good keyboards. Nothing really else here. Uh, yeah, we're going to move on down the line here. Uh, what am I looking up? What am I doing? Oh, I'm looking up the hard drive is what I'm doing. I'm just going to try to see if... Yeah, I know. Even brand new, it's not, I mean, if I get it for a couple bucks, it would be good, but even $5 would be okay. But it's an old standard. Yeah, I, and the other thing, too, about hard drives, you know, if they get banged around too much, sometimes the inter, even in a box, I mean, if it's get jostled around, um, the internal components on the hard drive can get damaged. And once it's damaged, it's damaged. There's no, there's no turning back. But everything in there is built pretty well, and you know everything's pretty tight. And most of the time, it's perfectly fine, even getting jostled around. But you generally don't want to do that. And I don't know this. I don't know how long it's been at Goodwill. How long it's been sitting in the back? Where exactly it came from? But. You know, that, that's also playing, you know, going through my head, too, as well. But it will live in my cart for a little while while I'm here at the Goodwill. And we're checking out the toy aisle and backpacks. There's the plush over there to the left. Uh, not really seeing anything. Uh, nothing really that great here. And then now looking over at the laptop bags, travel bags, the Microsoft, uh, probably a little giveaway or an employee item. But this one here was kind of cool. It was fossil, but the price kind of just turned me off. So like, now, no, no, no. Fossil is a good brand. Fossil is a good brand to look out for. It's just, you know, what you can buy it for. Taking a look here at the toys. Uh, those cars right there are it used to be sold at Chevron. I don't know if they still sell them there or not. I'm pretty sure these are pretty old. I remember these from teen years. They want five twenty nine. I think that's about what they go for between five to ten dollars. So there's not really any profit there at all for me. Take a look at the use. I mean the new. You always got to make sure you check your you get your settings right. Uh, make sure you're looking up the right item. If it's new, used. Make sure you're on solds. 
And then if we see some souls, we just go quickly, you know, look over at what's uh, what's currently listed to get your sell-through rate. You know, if there's five sold, and then you go over to see what's still listed, like 50 of them listed, you're competing against those 50 people to try to get it sold. Generally, you want more sold than there are listed, is what you're looking for. I kind of like this bag, and we end up taking this bag. This is a French bull. It's by Target, from Target. But it was clean. I don't know. Maybe I think it was like probably new without tags. Um, nice colors, nice and bright. It's a travel bag, like a duffel bag, and it has different cities on it from around the world. I'm just checking everything out, making sure there's no holes or rips or wear. Make sure it has the crossbody and looks good to me. I'm gonna put this in the cart, but I'm definitely gonna put this back. These Lego Land plush don't really go for that much, so I'm not gonna. I'm not a buyer. I thought maybe because it was Legoland. I haven't. I have sold the um, like the Lego plush, the Star Wars ones, the Jago ones. But I thought maybe because this one comes from Legoland and it looks like it's probably modeled after like a Legoland employee. I thought maybe we were something, but now. Miscellaneous aisle, all kinds of different stuff here. Lots of stationery. There's some shampoo. This is like their baggy area. Bag, would you, what some people would call the baggy wall. Like some Goodwills have a baggy wall. My, the Savers here in our town has a baggy wall. But this would be like the baggy wall. I'm checking out these hooked on phonics things. And there's a few of them there, and I do find another one. I'm going to quickly look it up. I don't know if... I wasn't sure. I haven't seen Hooked on Phonics in a while. I know those Rosetta Stone things can do pretty well. If they're, um, you know, uh, brand new especially. But these ones appear to be okay. About 30 bucks. That's what we're looking at at the comps. It does, those ones didn't look exactly like the box that I saw here. And the other thing, too, is... Um, like six bucks. Six to 30 would be pretty good. Um, and the ones listed, too, were used. These were used. But <laughs> I'm going to talk to my wife about it and everything, and... Ultimately, I'm going to decide not to not to buy them just because I'd have to make sure everything's in there. How much time is that going to take? Do I have to count anything out? And we do find some other good stuff. So I'm not really you know, too heartbroken that we don't end up picking up those uh, Hooked on Phonics. But if we do find them, if they're brand new, it looks like it's a good bolo. Um, if it's brand new or if you have the time to look through it personally, I just didn't want to go through it. So not going to bother with it, but still looking here, looking for something here to draw me in something. There's another, there's another hooked on phonics right there too. There it is. I think I might have dropped something there. Again, trying to keep things as clean and or as neat as possible. Sensi's dumb. Not for the price that Goodwill is asking. They go for 15 right around. I would say Sensi's go for probably about 10 to $15. Just generic ones. Don't do it. This is uh, that champagne. You've seen me pick this up before. It's a champagne holder, cozy, you know. Uh, insulated, I don't know. Insulated bottle bag, it's not really insulated. But they go for like 20 bucks, so I'm definitely gonna pick that up for $4. And I already have one, so I'm gonna throw it into my listing. And it's perfectly clean, ready to go. Piece of cake. Kinda take a look and briefly looking inside this red, uh, inside the red cart, just see if there's anything in there at the bottom. Like I said, I try to make sure, like, when, when the carts come out, 
usually stacked with the you know with big stuff on top so y'all definitely glance at the top and then maybe i'll go make a few rounds and hopefully it's been cleaned out a little bit and then i can take a look towards the bottom because usually the good stuff falls all the way to the bottom sometimes it's broken so you gotta be careful this is a um telescope but cheap cheap and you see it already coming apart it wasn't even leather so not worth my time i thought it might have been a kaleidoscope kaleidoscope some old kaleidoscopes might do pretty well i haven't come across any but so i don't have any cell history with it but i do know there is some value in kaleidoscopes Check out the metals. Not, you know, my most favorite aisle. And I don't really find too much in the metals. Um, although the metals can fool you, though. Sometimes you may think something is valuable, but it's not. There's a bunch of easels. If anybody's, you know, in the market for much, they have a whole bunch of easels there. You know, people going back to having in person meetings and stuff. Need some easels for displays. Goodwill has it covered. This Goodwill has it covered. Tons of easels there. Kind of cheap easels, but you know, they'll work. There's those temptations. There's more temptations scattered throughout here. And again, temptations isn't really worth it. Not sure. She looked kind of upset. I restock in. That is a good aisle. So remember, remember the Goodwill employees restock in there? That is a good aisle to look for some some hidden gems over there. I mean, I found some great stuff in plain brown boxes. You just got to open up the box, and I found some great stuff over there. I'm just scoping out this French bull uh, bag here. Just trying to make sure, double check... Not double check, because I didn't even look it up the first time. But check to make sure that it's worth it. And it appears to be probably about 40 bucks, 40 or $50, I'm going to say, on that on that duffel bag. It's really cool. I really like it. My wife liked it, too. Don't think it's a keeper, though. Got plenty of bags to travel in and pack stuff up, pack stuff up in. I had a tough time figuring out what the model number was on this guy. I couldn't. I just couldn't. It was, it was a lot of uh, writing in Chinese. But I finally find it, and it turned out to be a second a secondary monitor. So, all right, we're coming down. We're coming towards the mugs here. Plates, plates. I don't like plates. Mini figure. And I don't really find. Oh, oh, here I am looking at that plush here, just trying to see. Am I taking it? Am I not taking it? Start to thin out my cart as I'm going along, and as you can see, there's one that's here for nine ninety nine currently, probably in better condition than mine. And I think they wanted four dollars for that Lego Land. Plush. There's some mugs. Nothing very good here. Yeah, nothing really. I'm gonna I'm gonna take here in the mug section. And I'm gonna look for good mugs. Mugs take up storage. Mu I need a, a box for mugs. You know, you need bubble wrap for mugs. There's a lot that goes into shipping a mug out, to selling the mugs. So, from here on out, it's got to be a great mug. Great mug. Not even a good mug. It's got to be a great mug in order for me to buy it and try to sell it. Here we are on the, clear, uh, the other side of the clear glass. Um, the larger clear glass, the bowls, the vases. 
decanters, maybe. Little jars, probably missing lids. And again, like I was saying earlier, it's tough to see, like, you know, when you're staring at clear glass, I mean, it's clear. It's hard to tell, like, what's, you know, what's good, what's not good. But sometimes, I, I you know, as you're walking by it, you will, as you start uh, looking at the shelves, as you start picking up glass, or as you start, you know, training yourself to on what you should be looking for you you'll walk by it and all of a sudden you'll be like boom i know you know i don't know exactly what that is but i know that has some value on it and that happened that has happened to me on many occasions just that you know that second look like hey what wait a second that looks a bit different so it takes time it takes training uh, train your brain train your eyes but you'll get there too Records. I'm picking up a record. <laughs> this is uh, uh, a Christian record. Uh, the character is called Salty. P S A L T Y S. Or no. Uh, T Y. Salty. There you go. You got a book. I think he, he's supposed to represent uh, a hymnal or a hymn. A hymn book. Um, the songs you know, that you would Salty. sing in church. And it was kind of like a musical. There was a live action, I don't know, show, I think. I remember watching when I was a kid. Kind of creepy because, you know, it was like a, you know, like a human fate. I mean, it was a human in, in a book. And then they, you know, they had an animated series. <laughs> I just, you know, it just reminded me of my childhood. Not that I liked it, but it reminded me of my childhood. Here we got the purses. This is the end of towards the end of the, my trip here. Here are the purses, and nothing really that good. Nothing that I'm going to add to my storage. Oh wait, my, my my wife got that Brighton purse, so we are picking up one purse today. I just didn't find it, and she found it in the bins that were over there. This was kind of interesting. Another furry. Purse. You'll see in the recap, the Brighton has like a. I don't know if it's real cowhide or not, but it has like fur. It's furry. <laughs> uh, all these people here waiting for the dressing rooms. And we're going to head towards the front. We're going to go. My wife is already in the in the thing. I had already emptied my cart into her okay. cart, you know, of the items we were going to take, no. and then I go out and uh, put back no, either stuff she right. has or the stuff I have. Uh, stuff we're not going to take. She was showing me a Hello Kitty backpack, but it was probably too high. Either way, here we go. We're going to drop this off, and we're going to go into the recap here and deeper dive. All right, everybody. Welcome to the recap. Um, dang, it's hot. Uh, let me know where you guys are at. Is it hot? I mean, it is like in the high 90s where I'm at here in San Jose, California. And we're dying. Power outage is happening because, you know, the heat. Everyone's using so much power right now. Um, they let my son school out early because there was no power at the school, so... Um, hot day, but should be cooler tomorrow. Either way, we're going to go to the flea market tomorrow morning, but this is the recap of this video. Um, got some great items here, uh, that we're going to resell. So we're going to make some good money on these items. Uh, right off the bat here, you see the purse. Um, I don't know if that's real or not. It is a Brighton purse. So I'm leaning towards that probably being real, real cowhide. Okay. Now, the inside definitely has some, um, as you can see, something definitely spilled in there. But I'm probably going to use a lint brush, you know, get everything out. It's a limited edition collect Brighton Collectibles. And comps are right around $200 for this purse. Now, 
Just hear some damage here and there. Um, there are issues with it, as you can see. So, if I had to guess, probably about a hundred and maybe 150, 120 to 150 bucks is what I'm going to guess this is going to go at. Great purse. We got it for. Where did the tag go? Did the tag get ripped off? I think the tag got ripped off. Uh, but I think it was twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for that purse. Oh, right here. Here we go. Twelve dollars nineteen cents. There it is. And there's the Brighton. Um, you know their uh, charm that they put on a lot of their bags. So we'll see. Um, should be a great purse. Should be you know should sell really well. It is Brighton. It has the cow pattern fur on it. Whether it's real or not, I'm not sure. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on that. Um, then we have the Cabela's hat, which isn't you know crazy valuable, but uh, four nineteen. If you are finding these Cabela hats, um, the orange tends to go you know be a little bit more worth a little bit more. Should be about twenty dollars for this hat. And the reason why I believe the orange goes for a bit more is because it's you know the hunters, you know a lot of hunter you have to you know, have to wear orange. Um, Usually wear orange, like an orange vest, orange hat, kind of signify that you are, you know, a person and you don't get shot, basically. Um, so that's a Cabela's hat. I guess a hunting hat. You know, so I got that hunter orange. So four nineteen should be like twenty bucks. And then you've seen me pick this up in a previous video, and this is that champagne, same exact one that we have already. So all I'm going to do is add this to the existing listing as another quantity. I'll put this so this be, we have two of them now. I'm just going to have to look up to see what box I put them in. And I'll just take the tag off. It's still clean and everything. So I'll add this to my other listing. And boom, we got another, I think this was, I think this listed for 20 bucks, I think is what it's listed for. Then a couple of interesting, this is Ikea. Couldn't, wasn't really sure what the, what the comps are on this. I'm thinking about 15 maybe $20 might be a bit of a stretch. I'm thinking 15 but it was only $2.19. And this allows you to seal off a jar, allows you to seal off, you know, your fruit or veggies just to help preserve them for a little bit longer. Let's see that there. And again, it's Ikea, and it was only 2 bucks, So I don't think we can go wrong on $2, and we'll make a little bit of money on that. Um... And my wife picked up this, this, and, and the bag there. Uh, now, this cake cutter, I haven't seen... I haven't seen a... Um, this kind of helps to level your cake. So, for cake designers and stuff. And I, I don't... I'm not a baker or anything like that. Um, but my family, my parents, and you know, used to bake a lot of cakes and decorate a lot of cakes... And I've never seen a tool like this. Usually they would just cut it. But, you know, you get like a, one of those spinning uh, cake, uh, what do you call those, cake pedestals. And you kind of you know, put your knife on it and then you kind of, I think that's more for frosting it. You spin it as you frost it. Either way, they used to cut it to make it level. But this would, would probably be a lot easier if you're leveling cakes um, to stack them up, you know. Got like a one, two, three, four. Like, that's a four layer cake right there. So, um, I don't know, $15 or so. I've never seen this before and I've never seen this in stores. And um, I've been around people that made cakes for a long time. Never seen this. So, I think for two bucks, should be pretty good. And it's Wilton, of course. Um, I've already, I've sold a bunch of Wilton. Um, Wilton cake. Uh, not toppers, but they were, um, I guess you could put them on top of a cake, but they're little pillars. And we found like 20 or 25 of them. And we, I've been selling them off uh, for, uh, I think they were $1.29 each. And we've been selling them for about $12 to $15 each on eBay. And they're just little pillars, they come in a four pack. And I guess you would either put them in between layers or might put them on top of your cake and stack something on top of it. But those have been really good. So definitely Wilton is a brand to look out for, but it's not, let me see that there. Wilton, it's not terribly expensive, but definitely something to look out for. It's a premium brand um, as far as baking, baking goes. Um, and then I got this. This I was so curious about. It's Lenovo. 
Um, they make a lot of uh, um, computer parts and everything. And Lenovo is usually uh, or is associated with IBM because Lenovo bought their uh, their uh, computer uh, business uh, from IBM. So I saw this. I was like, Lenovo, what is this? Is this a picture frame? Is this a laptop? I thought at first it was maybe is it a laptop? What's going on here? But you saw me trying to like fiddle with it. I mean, I was kind of curious because it only has a. So it only has a USB. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has like a, uh, I forget what, which one this is called, a micro? No, mini. I think this is a mini USB plug. And it has the, the USB indicator there. And then it has a brightness here. So this would be what I'm guessing used for your laptop and to have a secondary monitor. But I'm not, I wasn't 100% I wasn't 100% familiar with, I didn't know that really they made these little portable monitors. I thought it was a picture frame or something. I didn't know they made these portable monitors prior to, I don't know, like two or three, four, five years ago or so. It was probably really expensive when it came out. Um, but I have a little monitor. I have a little monitor I bought on Amazon. I think it was $120. And, but it has all the connections. It has like a... <laughs> Uh, mini HDMI. I think it has a mini display port and it has USB for power. This one doesn't have any of that. It just has the one. So I still got to do some more reach. It looks like it goes for about, I think you saw the in the video, I think there was something like 25, 30, 40. We pay, what do you pay for this? $16.49. I kind of paid up a little bit. Should I have paid that much? <sighs> I wouldn't recommend you guys paying $16.49 for this, but just because I don't know, I'm gonna have to test it out. I don't know how to. It only has one plug, USB, and that's it. So I'm gonna do some research online and figure out exactly how to get this powered up. But it's pretty cool. It's an extra monitor. I have. I already have an extra monitor, so I really don't need one. It just doesn't have all the connections that I'm used to for these portable monitors. But this was done in, let's see, 2012. Hmm. Yeah, I, I. In 2012, I don't think I didn't know anybody made portable monitors like this. I know they made like little digital frames, but as far as portable monitors, so you can have a extra monitor probably where you're traveling. Pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this and get it listed. Maybe keep it. I don't know. I might. I can always use an extra monitor around. But either way. That is the roundup from today. So we got some great items. Um, obviously, the purse is going to be the home run here. And, you know, we always try to look out for home runs. Everybody looks out for home runs, those big hits. You, know, you pay a little bit, pay and make hundreds. Oh, not that. This, the Four Roses Cup. This one I'm keeping. Um, Four Roses is a whiskey uh, American bourbon. Oh, well, this has to be bourbon. Well, bourbon has very specific rules in order for it to be called a bourbon. Uh, but it's whiskey. Uh, Four Roses is a brand. I've never seen their branding on cups or anything before. So I'm going to keep this for a buck 89. Cool cup. I like it. Um, do look out for these though. Like I, I've got that Hendrix one the other day and I already listed it. It has watchers on it already. So definitely keep your eye out for branded spirit glassware. They do go for a premium. Uh, over just standard gla glassware. And it could be cheap. I mean, this isn't anything fancy or anything. This is just just a, a regular old glass. But because it says four roses, it's probably a $10 glass is what it's worth. So you could make good money on it. Um, it's just they might be long, long tail items. It might sit for a while before they actually sell. But I've bought and sold like Jack Daniels, Knob Creek, uh, some of the major whiskey brands, hopefully Hendrix, uh, Grey Goose. Grey Goose does a lot of they put, they put their branding on a lot of glassware, and I have bought and sold Grey Goose stuff before. But that's the haul for today, and great stuff. And be on the lookout for home runs, but don't count on it all the time. Don't always rely on those. You need to be able to source what we call bread and butter or just your stuff that, uh, you know, your $15 items, your $20 items, 
maybe thirty or forty dollar items, you know, and then occasionally you get to find those big home runs. So when you're selling stuff, you're moving like your ten, your twenty dollar items, and then all of a sudden when you get that hundred, two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar sale. That gives you that big bump and, you know, that really pumps you up as a reseller. You see that sale and it's like, all right, let's go find another one. Um, so, you know, tough to find, though. Tough to find these big hits. Um, you know, and there's a lot of resellers out there, so people are looking for them already. There's some people, you know, they're more specialized than maybe you are finding some other big hits. But this purse was there. My wife found it. So there we go. Otherwise, guys, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.